Hey guys, welcome back to Base the MMA. We have some new UFC 300 fight announcements. Dana White just announced Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje for the BMF belt. This fight is going to be taking place at UFC 300, probably on the main card. Obviously, it is a title fight. He also announced Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. But let's first talk about the fight that we all want to talk about, and that's Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje, guys. This is a fight that I knew was going to happen. I even made a video, I believe it was a month ago or two months ago, saying that the fight just made too much sense for it not to happen, and that's exactly what happened. Mystic Base strikes again, and Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje, even though the fight stylistically doesn't make a lot of sense, timing-wise, it always made so much sense to make this fight because we knew Islam Makhachev, at the time, I thought Islam Makhachev was going to fight Charles Oliveira sometime early 2024, and I knew that Justin Gaethje was not going to be able to fight the winner until maybe late 2024. Also, Max Holloway is waiting to see what happens with Volkanovski versus Ilya Teporia. And I even mentioned that if Volkanovski ends up winning that fight, it's very hard to make Alexander Volkanovski versus Max Holloway 4. And then if Ilya Teporia ends up beating Volkanovski, I think the UFC might give Volkanovski a rematch just because he's been a longtime champion in the featherweight division. So there wasn't really anywhere for Max Holloway to go except backwards. So I always felt like that Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje fight was always going to happen. It was always meant to happen. And it's going to happen. It's been added to UFC 300. And this is a, even though the fight, you know, we'll talk about the fight itself. The fight is perfect for UFC 300. It, it's, a, it's a banger matchup. Justin Gaethje, highlight reel. This guy's knocking people out. Very dangerous. You know, you you it's rare that you get a Justin Gaethje, you get a boring Justin Gaethje fight. You know, every time Justin Gaethje is in that octagon, you know you're getting one of the most exciting fights in the UFC. He's probably the most exciting fighter in the UFC. Max Holloway has looked absolutely incredible. He's coming off that knockout over the Korean Zombie, put a dominant performance over Arnold Allen. And Max Holloway is also a very entertaining striker, high volume, high pace. And besides Alexander Volkanovsky, I mean, Max Holloway is probably the best featherweight of all time. I mean, Max Holloway is absolutely incredible. And these are two big names. I mean, these are two recognizable names, which is the type of fight that you need currently right now at UFC 300. Because if they had a Leon Edwards with Bilal Muhammad too, it's going to feel like a very standard, you know, formal title fight. But if you add Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway, even though we'll talk about the fight itself because I have a lot of thoughts on that. It's going to get your juices flowing. You're going to be like, man, that's a good banger. Look, a lot of things happen. It is MMA. It is MMA, guys. We have to remember that because I see a lot of people saying, you know, Justin Gaethje is going to win easily. You know, Max Holloway has no chance. And even though I am picking Justin Gaethje to win that fight, it is MMA at the end of the day. And we've seen that Justin Gaethje can get hurt on the feet as well. So if Max Holloway is able to put the volume, the one thing that I let's let's just talk about the matchup now. If Max Holloway, because this fight's going to take place at 185 pounds, the only thing that I'm scared of is that Max Holloway will not properly bulk up to the lightweight division. Because if he doesn't, he's going to have such a hard time against Justin Gaethje because Justin Gaethje is one of the hardest hitter, if not the hardest hitter, at 155. Max Holloway, he's not a guy that's knocking, even though he has a lot more power than people you know, like to believe, He's not a guy that's knocking out people. You know, Max Holloway doesn't have crazy power. So he's going to move up to a division where his, he's going to even have less power than he did in the featherweight division against the hardest hitter like Justin Gaethje, who seems to be improving, who seems to be more technical, more patient these days, better combinations, threw a head kick and knocked out Dustin Poirier. I mean, Dustin Poirier and Max Holloway went, went to war. And even though Dustin Poirier, I thought, clearly won that fight, I mean, there was moments where Max Holloway started to get the better of Dustin Poirier. And we just saw what this new and improved Justin Gaethje did to Dustin Poirier. So, you know... Man, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. I, I feel for the Holloway fans because it is a very tough matchup. But at the end of the day, it could be a five-round war. Who knows? Maybe Max Holloway turns out to be a lot more durable than we expect. But, I mean, Max Holloway, he's taken a lot of damage in his career, guys. I mean, I mean, he didn't take that much damage against a Korean zombie. But prior to that, he fought Arnold Allen. That was a competitive fight at 
in moments and he did take a bit of damage in that fight he took a lot of damage in that trilogy against alexander volkanovsky he took a lot of damage against dustin poirier so even though max holloway he's very young i believe he's 30 to 31 years old he's a fighter that is you know he'd be in his 40s with his uh with his fighting experience you know what i'm saying he's he's an old vet i mean he's not an old vet in terms of actual age but when it comes to fight experience this guy has fought many wars. He's taken a lot of damage. Justin Gaethje looks, you know, improved. Justin Gaethje is very durable. And I don't know if Max Holloway is going to be able to knock out Justin Gaethje. I mean, the only way I could see Max Holloway winning is maybe winning a decision. But I, I just think that the damage from Justin Gaethje, the damage that he's going to impose is just going to be too much for Max Holloway. And even though I love this matchup for UFC 300... You know, I'm glad that Dana White mentioned, well, he didn't mention, but he announced, he didn't say that it was a co-main event or the main event. So I'm guessing it's going to be the feature fight of the card, which means that we're going to get two more fights on top of this fight, which makes the card great now. It actually does make it great because if Holloway versus Max, if Holloway versus Gaethje, I was going to say Holloway versus Max, but if Holloway versus Gaethje is a feature bout, of UFC 300 and let's say they had a Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad and a Jamal Hill versus Alex Pereira in my opinion the card is saved or if they make Israel Asanya faces the winner of Sean Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis at UFC 300 that would also be incredible matchmaking and you would have a star studded UFC 300 I mean you would have Adesanya you would have um Sean Strickland or Drake is who I'm winning. Or they could also go Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill. I mean, Alex Pereira, one of the biggest stars currently in the UFC. And then you have Leon Edwards. I mean, still very recognizable. You know, it is what it is. I, I mean, the matchup itself is not something too exciting, but it could turn out to be a lot more competitive than we're expecting. So it might be a good fight. Then we have Holloway versus... Gaethje, you know, it's still going to be very entertaining. You're, we're either going to see a five-round war or we're going to see Holloway get knocked out for the first time in the UFC and get dropped. So that's going to be very interesting. Young Willie versus Young Yonan. I mean, Young Willie is one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting female fighter currently in the UFC. Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukin. I mean, Charles Oliveira right now is also one of the biggest stars in the UFC. Also incredibly entertaining, man. Charles Oliveira's last four or five fights are some of the most entertaining fights in the UFC. And then you have Yuri Proska versus Alexander Rakic in, as the main fight of the prelims. Guys, UFC 300 is looking a lot better. And I'm glad that they added Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. I know that a lot of you guys are going to be commenting down below. Look, Max Holloway is going to get absolutely destroyed. I'm not excited. It's not a big enough fight. I get that. But guys, think about it. In terms of timing and the, in terms of where the lightweight division and the featherweight division are at right now. It just makes perfect sense for that fight to happen right now. It just makes perfect sense. And even though I think that, you know, Max Holloway is going to get his chin cracked and he's going to get knocked out for the first time or not severely hurt and probably going to reduce his lifespan by 10 years, I still think I'm very excited for the match. You know, I'm very excited to watch the fight. Anything could happen. I mean, we've seen in this sport where sometimes when we're very confident about a fighter winning, the other fighter ends up winning. So you never know in this sport. But yes, I completely understand why most of us are picking Justin Gaethje to beat Max Holloway. But I'm still very curious, guys, because if Max Holloway is able to properly bulk up to the weight class, if he's able to, like, he knows that he's getting into a fight with Justin Gaethje, he knows it could be a life-changing fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think Max Holloway is the type of guy to just take this fight just because. Like, I know, I think he knows. Like, if Max Holloway is able to beat Justin Gaethje, guys, he's going to get a title shot. He's going to be fighting Islam Makhachev. UFC is going to be like, no, Charles Norman, you guys will wait. The winner of Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje, guys, is going to fight Islam Makhachev. I promise you. Even though Dana White said that Charles versus Armin, that guy was going to fight the winner, was going to fight Islam, I don't think so. Because if Ma Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, who ends, whoever ends up winning, puts a masterful performance, they're going to end up fighting Islam Makhachev sometime later in the summer. And I think Charles Oliveira versus Armin, they'll probably fight the winner of that sometime you know, end of end of this year, maybe early next year. But I think that's what's going to end up happening. I think there's a reason why they put Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway on the same card as Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sirukin. I think the UFC is setting this up 
for the winner of Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway, especially if it's Max Holloway, to fight Islam Akashev in the summer. And we also had news that the UFC was postponing UFC Saudi Arabia, which means they probably didn't have a, a good enough card to actually go go there in March and, and satisfy those um, Saudi Arabians. So they want to go back in June. And I thought, you know, okay, Islam Makhachev is going to be returning in June and he'll probably be fighting Justin Gaethje. But now with Justin Gaethje fighting Max Holloway in April, I doubt that Islam Makhachev is going to fight any of these guys in June. Like that would be two months. It's not enough time. So if anything, that means that Islam Makhachev is not going to be fighting in that UFC Saudi Arabia card. He's probably going to be fighting in August, July. And I think, I think that the what the UFC might do is make Hamza Shemaev maybe fight the winner of Drikas versus Sean Strickland at UFC Saudi Arabia. Who knows? Maybe they'll do that. Maybe make out Asanya versus Hamza Shemaev. I don't know in what direction the UFC is going to go with Israel Asanya. I think right now they're waiting to see what happens between Sean Strickland versus Drikas Duplessis. I think that if Sean Strickland ends up defeating Drikas Duplessis, I think they're more likely to do Sean Strickland versus Hamza Shemaev. I think if Drikas Duplessis ends up beating Sean Strickland, they're more likely to do Israel Asanya versus uh, Drikas. You know what I'm saying? So it all depends. I think right now the UFC is waiting to see what happens. There's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to this fight, guys. And something about the UFC, we don't always get the fights that make sense, guys. I, I think something that's very understated when it comes to matchmaking is timing. Timing is key. And most of the time, the reason why fights happen at a certain time is because of timing. It's all due to timing. Sometimes the most deserving guy doesn't fight for the title due to an injury, due to the fact that he's going to fight. Or, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things, a lot of factors they have to consider when making these matchups. And like I said, even though stylistically, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway doesn't look to be a very competitive fight. It just makes a lot of sense timing-wise. It makes a lot of sense with the fact that it's UFC 300. It makes a lot of sense as these two guys are some of the most exciting fighters in the UFC. Justin Gaethje's never in a boring fight. Justin Gaethje just won the BMF belt. Max Holloway is considered a BMF. So even though, you know, when we start to actually break down the fight, you know, it's pretty scary for Max Holloway. The fight always made sense, and I've called it for the last couple of months that I said, you know what, I feel like they're going to make Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje. It's just a fight that makes too much sense right now, and even though, you know, Max Holloway did did tweet out that he wanted to fight Justin Gaethje, Justin Gaethje seemed like he didn't want to fight Max Holloway, and I completely understood why, because, you know, he's at the cusp of a title shot. Why would he, you know, not wait for the winner of Charles versus Islam and fight Max Holloway where, you know, even though a lot of us think that Justin Gaethje is going to run through Max Holloway, you know, timing wise, he might not be ready to fight the winner. You know what I'm saying? So I completely understood why Justin Gaethje didn't want to didn't want to fight Max Holloway initially. But maybe the UFC told him, look, Islam Makhachev isn't going to come back. Maybe he is going to fight the winner of Charles versus Armin and you're going to fight him later. It's better if you take a fight in the meantime, a banger matchup with Max Holloway. You guys are two big guys in the UFC. Let's make it happen for UFC 300. And that's exactly what happened, guys. So besides the Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway fight, we also had an announcement for Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. I think this is a great matchup for Jim Miller, guys, and I'm actually picking Jim Miller to win this fight. He's actually looked absolutely incredible. The amount of fights this guy has had in his career, for him to still be at this level fighting with these guys is absolutely incredible. And Bobby Green is coming off a brutal, brutal knockout against Jalen Turner. And we've seen that Bobby Green... Doesn't have the best chin. I mean, he also got knocked out terribly by Drew Dober. So I think that Jim Miller is going to end up winning this fight. He could also submit Bobby Green on the ground. And Jim Miller also hits very hard. Has a lot of power as well. So I'm going Jim Miller. I love this fight. I love this fight for the early prelims of UFC 300. I mean, guys, let's look at UFC 300. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Young Wei Lee versus Young Yong Nan. Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sirukin. Yuri Proska versus Alexander Rakic. Calvin Cater versus Ajamain Sterling. Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Crap. David Team Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. UFC 300 is looking good, guys. It's looking good. You know, I just hope, you know, that they have a great main event. 
I don't want any <laughs> gimmicks, but maybe they end up making Arasanya versus Pereira 3. I don't think Arasanya deserves a title shot. And I think the way they've been talking about the light heavyweight division, I don't think Israel Arasanya is going to end up fighting Alex Pereira. I think if anything, they might make Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. Maybe they're going to make Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill for UFC Rio in May. Or, you know, like I said, maybe they're waiting to see what happens between Sean Strickland versus Drickus. And maybe they'll try to get the winner versus Arasanya for the main event of UFC 300. I mean, we also had rumors of Leon Edwards potentially fighting Bala Muhammad. The rematch happening at UFC 300. So if those fights end up happening, UFC 300 is going to be absolutely stacked because now Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukin would be the opener of the main card, guys. So let me know what you guys think. Crazy fight announcements. Let me know if you, if you think that this fight vastly improves ufc 300 i mean i've seen some people say a week ago this card was shit all to now this card is a banger because of that holloway fight i think the card is now great look even though i made a video about ufc 300 not looking good i mainly discussed one the way dana white was making these announcements two the fact that it seemed like they don't have a main event and maybe they still don't maybe i'm still right about that but i still thought you know there's a lot of recognizable names. You have to make the right matchups as well. I understood why the UFC is in a tough position because not only do you have to get big names for this card, but you also have to get matchups that stylistically are bangers, right? Because if you get recognizable names against a guy that's boring, it's not going to get the fans very excited. So I completely understood where the UFC was at. You know what I'm saying? So guys, please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.